Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So now we are now in a new chapter, which is chapter 7, Ionic Equilibrium. And in this chapter, there are going to be three subtopics altogether, which is the subtopic of 7.1, acid and bases, the subtopic of 7.2, acid base titration, and then the subtopic of 7.3, solubility equilibrium. So in this chapter, we're going to focus on the subtopic of 7.1, acid and bases, part 1 of the video first. So in this video, we're going to learn about the definition of acid and base according to the Arrhenius, Lewis, as well as the Pronsted Lowry theory. Next, we're going to define and identify the conjugate acid as well as the conjugate base according to the last theory here, which is the Pronsted Lowry theory. Last but not least, we're going to define the strong acid, strong base, weak acid, and weak base. So the learning outcome of A, B, and C will be covered in this video, which is in part 1. Meanwhile, for the learning outcome of D and E will be covered in the next video, which is in part 2. So without any further ado, let us start with part 1 of the video first. So, acid and bases. As mentioned before, there are going to be three theories that we're going to learn, which is the Arrhenius, the bronsted lowry theory, as well as the Lewis theory. For now, let us look into the Arrhenius theory first. So, for the Arrhenius theory, it was stated that the acid is basically a substance that's going to dissociate in aqueous solution in order to produce the hydrogen ion, H+, or the hydronium ion in an aqueous solution, which is the history of plus here. So let's say if we have an HCl, which is a hydrochloric acid, when it is dissociated, it can produce H plus aqueous ion, as well as the Cl minus aqueous ion. And we can also include water into the equation, and this will result in the formation of the H3O plus aqueous ion, and the Cl minus is still the same. So since acid will produce H plus ion, the bases will now produce the hydroxide ion when it is dissociated in echo solution. For example, is the sodium hydroxide. When it is dissociated, it's going to produce Na plus aqueous ion as well as NN ion, which is the hydroxide ion. So this is the definition of acid and bases according to Arrhenius. Now we're going to look into the next theory, which is the Lewis theory. So according to Lewis, the acid is basically a substance in which it can be an atom ion or a molecule that can accept a pair of electrons in order to form a coordinate covalent bond. The example of the substance include the positive ion which is the H plus or the ferrum 2 plus ion or it can be an incomplete octet molecules which includes the BF3 as well as the BeCl2. Okay. Meanwhile for the basis, it basically a substance that donates a pair of the electron, for example, a lone pair. For the acid, it accepts a pair of electron. So for the example of bases are basically the negative ions, for example, the hydroxide ion or the Cl- ion, or it can be a molecule with a lone pair, for example, ammonia. So you can imagine it to the similar situation as what you have learned in chapter 4, which is the formation of the native coordinate bond. So let's say if you have your ammonia, which acting as a base because it have a lone pair here, so it's going to donate the pair of electrons into the H+, which is the example of an acid. So it's going to produce a native coordinate bond. So similar situation can be imagined here. Okay, And this is the definition of acid and bases according to the Lewis theory. Next, we're going to look into the last theory, which is the bronsted lowry theory. So according to them, the acids are basically a substance that can donate a proton to another substance. Meanwhile, for the bases, it's basically a substance that can receive a proton from another substance. Let's say if we have the situation here, in which we have the HCl, which acting as an acid. Meanwhile, for the water here, it is a very special case because water can be an pottery. It can act as an acid or a base according to the situation. So because HCl is an acid, then the water will automatically become a base. So as what you can see here, the acid will donate its hydrogen so that the H2O can form H3O+. And as a result, Cl- is going to be formed. And 
also, when talking about the Pronsted Lowry theory, we need to talk about the conjugate acid as well as the conjugate base. So, what is that? So, basically, every acid will have its partner, which is the conjugate base. So, the conjugate base is basically a species that is formed when the acid donates proton. Okay, yang ini adalah acid. Bila di donate proton, dia akan jadi Cl-. So, this species here is known as the conjugate base. Alright. Meanwhile, for every base, they're going to have a conjugate acid. Dia terbalik. So, the conjugate acid is a species form when the base accept proton. So, when the base accept proton, which is become H3O+, it's going to become a conjugate acid. Okay? And this situation can also be applied to another equation. Let's say if we have ammonia, and then we have water, and then we're going to form NH4+, as well as the OH- equals ion. So, the ammonia here will be acting as a base. And automatically, the water will be acting as an acid because it's acting as an amphotonic. So, when the base accepts a proton, based on the definition, when it accepts a proton, so it's going to become NH4+. Okay? So, when it accepts a proton, it's going to have a partner, which is a conjugate acid. Meanwhile, for the acid, when it donates, a proton here, then it's going to become OH minus. So the acid will have the partner, which is a conjugate base. All right, and this is according to the Ronsted Lowry theory. To understand more about this, let us look into the exercise here. So for the exercise number one, we need to write the conjugate base for the following acids. So for the acid, we need to donate. H plus according to the Bronsted Lowry theory in order to form the conjugate base. So when it donates one of the proton, it's going to become H S O four minus. Okay, and it is maintaining to be aqueous ion. Similarly to here, so when it loses hydrogen here, it's going to become S two minus aqueous ion. Okay. Meanwhile, for the conjugate acid, um, it's coming from the base. So for the base, it needs to receive the proton, which is the H+. So when it receives a proton, then it's going to become NH4 plus aqueous. Okay. Meanwhile, for this case, when it accepts a proton, the negative will become positive, uh, the negative will be neutralized, so it's going to become H2CO3 A2 plus. Alright? Okay, and this is how we do the exercises here. Next, we're going to look into the common list for the strong acid as well as for the strong base. So, for your syllabus, this is the example of the strong acid, and these are the example of the strong base. So for the strong acid, we have seven of them all together. For the strong base, we're gonna have eight in total. So the strong acids, as uh, the strong acid can come from the halogen group, in which Cl, Br, and iodine. HF is not considered as a strong acid. Okay, so it only involves Cl, Br, and iodine. And here are the another example for the strong acid which is the nitric acid, the sulfuric acid, the chloric acid, as well as the perchloric acid. For the base, it will include the group 1 element, as well as the group 2. Other than this list here, for example, CH3, CH2, CH2, COOH, when you have some random acid here, then you know that it automatically become a weak acid. Okay, if it is if it is not inside the list. So the thing that is important in this chapter is that when writing the equation, 
the face need to be written and it is compulsory. Okay, and for the ionization of the strong acid and base, uh, because it is completely dissociated, uh, we can put it as a single headed arrow, okay, which is showing a complete dissociation. So we can include water or without water into the uh, equation here. For example, the HCl, you can include water to become H3O plus aqueous as well as Cl minus, or you can directly put HCl, it's going to dissociate into H plus as well as the Cl minus. Okay, or you can also use the sodium hydroxide, which is then a strong base. Okay, so the strong base, uh, usually we're going to use the second way, which is it's going to dissociate to be Na plus as well as the hydroxide. So if you include water, the water will be just at the uh, as the byproduct of the reaction. Okay, so either way, it is acceptable. Include water or does not include water. Meanwhile, for the weak acid and base, the most important thing is that we need to ensure that we have a reversible arrow. Okay, so for the weak acid, we need to have a reversible arrow because it is a partial dissociation. Okay, and usually we're going to include water in our dissociation. For example, the ammonia, when it dissolves in water, it, the uh, ammonia which acting as a base will accept a proton and it's going to form a hydroxide ion. Meanwhile, for the ethanoic acid, uh, it's going to donate a proton so that it can become ethanoic ion as well as the hydronium ion, which is a weak acid. Okay, so this is the major differences. So strong acid, single head, single head arrow, the weak acid, a reversible arrow, and we need to include water. And now to wrap up, let us look into the infos for the strong acid, strong base, weak acid, and weak base. So let us start with the strong acid first. So for the strong acid, it's going to dissociate completely in aqueous solution in order to produce high concentration of the H3O plus or the H plus. As mentioned, the strong acid will have 100% ionization or 100% dissociation, and the alpha is equal to 1. So let's say if you have our HCl aqueous, when it is dissolved in water, um, the acid will donate proton so that it can form a H3O plus aqueous ion as well as the Cl minus aqueous. And it is showing a single headed arrow and shows it is a 100% ion addition because it is a strong acid. Similarly, we can also use HCl aqueous directly from H plus aqueous as well as the Cl minus aqueous. And here are the another example, which is the nitric acid. It can also form H3O plus when it's dissolved in water, as well as the nitric ion here. Okay, if you don't want to include the water, so you can also directly return it to be H plus aqueous plus NO3 minus aqueous. So both of these ways are accepted. Now for the strong base, it's basically telling the same thing in which it dissociates completely, but it's going to produce a OH minus ion. So since we are talking about strong, then it will have 100% ionization and the alpha is equal to 1. Let's say if we have the NaOH aqueous, so it's going to 100% dissociated and it's going to produce Na plus aqueous ion as well as the hydroxide ion. And we can also do that for another example, for example, the CaOH2, where the Ca comes from the group 2. So when it is 100% ionized, we, we get the Ca2 plus aqueous ion as well as the hydroxide ion. And we need to balance the equation because it has two OH group here. Okay, And as mentioned, the state here is compulsory to be written. Now we're going to look into the weak acid. So for the weak acid, as mentioned, it only dissociates slightly in aqueous solution to produce a certain amount of the H3O plus or the H plus. Okay, so the dissociation will be less than 100% and it will be lesser than 1. So let's say if we have the ethanoic acid and we need to include the water when we involve with evolving the equation of the weak acid. And we need to have the reversible arrow because it is a partial dissociation. And the H plus 
going to be transferred into the water to form H3O plus and a ethan weight ion here. Okay, and for the weak base, similarly, we're going to show a reversible arrow because we are talking about weak base and we also need to include water in our equation. So we have our ammonia, when it dissolves in water, it's going to produce an ammonium 4 plus aqueous ion as well as the hydrochloric ion. Okay, and this is how we write the equation for the strong acid, strong base, weak acid, and weak base one by one. All right, so I think that's all for this video. See you again some other time. Bye.